Hey friends, welcome back to another Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. (laughs) I kind of popped that one on her, y'all. Welcome back to our podcast. We're so glad you have decided to drop in. Um, We have a great topic. Lane just showed me the little slideshow. And so if you're listening to this on a podcast app, just remember you can always watch it also over on YouTube, or actually you get to watch it over on YouTube and see her great slideshow that is um, along with this podcast. So this podcast is brought to you by thegardenersworkshop.com, where we are growing flower farmers and home cut flower growers. So Lane, what are we talking about today? All right. So today we're going to be discussing a topic a question that I answer all the time, and that is which seeds get started in the three quarter inch soil blocks, the two inch soil blocks, plug trays, and which seedlings get bumped up from three quarter inch soil blocks to two inch soil blocks. So I know this is a question a lot of people have because I get asked this all the time. So I'm excited to finally have a discussion about it that we can direct people to. And I think it will be helpful to a lot of people to understand how we do certain things and why. And before we get started, I also wanted to say that there is not one right or wrong way to start seeds. We're just sharing our experiences and what works for us. But if you have a way that works for you, that is great too. And that is so very, very true. All right. So should we get started? We should. All right, so let's start with the very first question. So which flowers and vegetables do you start in three quarter inch soil blocks, two inch soil blocks and plug trays and why? So I also wanna say for people using the metric system, the three quarter inch soil blocks are around two centimeters and the two inch soil blocks are around five centimeters, just so you understand what we're talking about here. So let's go ahead and start with three quarter inch soil blocks. What do you start in the three quarter inch soil blocks? Pretty much everything with the exception of just actually a handful. And I often say that I start probably 95, 98% of the seeds that I grow in the small soil block. Um, And so the way that I decide is literally um, dumping a few of the seeds in my hand out of the seed packet and taking a look at them and visually taking a little inventory. Um, yeah, a pea is a pea is a really great example because a lot of people know what a pea looks like, right? I mean, a pea seed looks just like the pea you eat. Um, so you can see that they're kind of dense and round and a little bit bigger. You know, I was going to say when I look at this a pea and then I look at that three quarter inch block, I think, oh my gosh, there's so much of that seed. When I push it down in, it's just going to bust the block open. So I automatically think, well, that's a good one for the two inch block. Um, And beyond that, I also think, hmm, what is that? If it's a a large seed, it just needs more space to grow in. So we start, I mean, people are so surprised. I think we start for vegetables. We start peppers and tomatoes, of course, all the lettuces, um, all of those in the small block. And in the flower world, we start in the small three quarter inch block, zinnias, marigolds, cosmos, basil, um, azuratum, all the celosias, um, and they literally, except we'll talk about it in a few minutes, um, there are only a few, very, very few that we start in the three quarter inch and then bump up. So all of these that I'm speaking of are literally started, grown, and then planted out in the garden in that three quarter inch block. Yep. I do the same thing. I start almost all of the flowers, herbs, and vegetables that I grow in the three quarter inch, unless they're too large, which we'll talk about in just a minute. And what is your reasoning for starting in the smaller block? Why do you like starting in that small block? And I will also say I'm planning on doing an entire episode on soil blocking. So we don't have to go fully into all the details about that, but why do you like starting in these three quarter inch blocks? Well, what drove me to where I am today is, and I still face the same challenge, is I don't have any greenhouses. Um, So I've been doing all of my seeds starting indoors. And when I first started out, I just didn't even have this building. I was doing it in my kitchen 
and I live in a bungalow, so very small space. So I started out using the two inch block as I think everybody does because there's a lot of people out there talking about starting in the two inch block. And I did the same and I quickly learned a couple of things. One, it takes a lot more space. And secondly, to seat that little tiny seed on top of that big chunk of soil, it was a very challenging to keep that entire chunk of soil evenly moist and warm while that seed goes through the sprouting process. Um, so I was able to push the envelope and figure out because I had space constraints um, and I just figured out, you know, I'll try it in the three quarter inch and see what happens. And lo and behold, when I coupled that with starting them only about a third less time in their transplant growing, so I didn't start as early, that my transplants grew into beautiful transplants and it was time for them to go out in the garden. So it worked really well. It's just, I'm so glad I was forced to figure it out. I may have still not be doing it that way. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's just very efficient space-wise. It's very efficient soil wise, and it produces just such healthy, robust seedlings. You won't believe the seedling you'll get out of this little three quarter inch block. And, you know, I, and I understand why people, even when I have seedlings, when I would do conferences and talks and I'm holding them up there showing these are four week old basils ready to go to the yeah. garden and they're gorgeous. They're like, no way. And I'm like, yay way. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> So I understand it doesn't seem possible, but after years and years and years of doing it on a massive scale, very successfully, I'm here to say you just have to try it to like it. Yes. All right. So which seeds do you start in the two inch blocks? Sure. So the two inch block, um, what we and Bobo just started some today, as a matter of fact, um, again, that's where a pea would be. So we started, you know, we start sweet peas in the two inch block. We also start, if we started sunflowers in soil blocks, we would start sunflowers. Um, and in the vegetable department, you know, zucchini and squash and pumpkins, all of those large seeds, which tend to also be kind of fast growers, you know, they need, they consume that block very, very quickly. Those are the yeah. only ones I can think of right now. Oh, oh. Calendula. Calendula. Yep. I agree with you. I try to avoid using the two inch blocks unless I have to, just because they take so much more space. They take so much more soil yes. and I'm frequently making less blocks than maybe you would be on a farm because I'm in a home garden setting and you need a pretty big mound of soil to be able to press that two inch blocker in and get it packed with soil yes. in those chambers. So I end up oftentimes having to pack it in with a spoon or something, which is just not as convenient. So when you need it, you need it. But I try to use the three quarter inch whenever I can. Something else I often do with the two inch blocks. For example, recently I'm growing some Econops and I was doing a moist stratification in the refrigerator. They decided to sprout right in there. So since they were already sprouted, I went ahead and just planted them directly into larger blocks. I've also done that with tomatoes and peppers. Sometimes I'll pre-sprout them on paper towels and then just pop them in. So those are the main things I use the two inch blocks for either large seeds that I don't think would do well in the three quarter inch blocks or seeds that I've pre-sprouted that I would end up bumping up to the two inch size anyways. And I so agree with what you said. And it's like, you don't use it often, but when you need it, you yes. need it. So it's yes. not like I'm saying... Um, you know, I mean, I don't know what I would do to start sweet peas if I didn't right. have that two inch blocker. So we don't pull it out to use it very often, but when you need it, you need it. So great. Exactly. Way. Okay. So now let's move on to plug trays. So we're going to talk about seedlings and cuttings that you start in plug trays. Let's focus on seedlings. So which seeds do you sow directly in plug trays? Sure. So. Um, Typically, anything that I start in a plug tray should probably be started in the two inch block. But because we grow such volumes of them every single week or free, more frequently, not more frequently or as frequently. Um, so we it's just not reasonable to make, you know, a thousand two inch soil blocks every week to sow your sunflowers. Right. And they do okay in plug trays. So we start our weekly sunflowers. And if you're watching this, 
um, on YouTube, um, the trays that you're looking at, the trays that are on the left, are sunflowers that are ready to be planted in the garden. They're about two and a half weeks old. And those on the right, you can see that some of them look a little yellowish. Those have just been brought outdoors from the grow room where they were on heat. Um, and they've just been brought out. They have just sprouted. So sunflowers, we also start calendula, which is a cool flower. It's kind of that funky looking seahorse looking shaped seed. And although I will say Bobo did start them in small soil blocks a couple of weeks ago and they're doing all right, but I feel like they're more vigorous either in the two inch block or the plug tray. What else do I plant in plug trays? Oh, when we're planting um, weekly limelight millet, any millet that we're planting weekly to, to harvest, we start those in um, plug trays. So plug trays, like the two inch block, are one of those things that they have their place. We just don't use them as much, but we definitely use them. We did have some follow up questions about our episode on direct seeding in very early spring. And you described your method of starting bupleurum in plug trays. And a lot of people were wondering, why do you recommend starting in plug trays versus soil blocks in that instance? Well, I think because first and the truth, you know, I am the queen of truth. The person I learned from did it in plug trays. And the first time I did it that way, I had such an overwhelming success that it was pretty amazing. And, you know, because we sow two to three seeds in each cell, but also for instance, with the bupleurum, bupleurum needs to be sown on the surface because it needs oxygen, but it also needs darkness. So when you plant it out in your garden in the fall, you sow the seed in the garden, you cover it with soil, but the temperatures are, I mean, the, the whole environment's different outdoors. Inside, um, you really, we have found that we need to sow the seeds on the surface and then you cover them with an upside down plug tray. Um, I just never took the next step. I would guess that soil blocks probably may dry out more than a plug tray does just because it's not in a container in that environment of sitting on a cool floor for days and days and days. I mean, that's what I do. We cover them, slide them up underneath the bench. And literally, I do not look under that tray for 10 days. And they're all sprouted when I look. So I just haven't messed why I broke it, why I fix it if it's not broken. Right? Yeah. And I would say to people, if you prefer using soil blocks, of course, go ahead and experiment doing that with soil blocks. Right. Want... Sure. Yeah. So before we move on to cuttings, I was just going to add one other thing that I use plug trays for. I don't use a lot of plug trays indoors because again, I'm a home gardener. I don't have a ton of grow light space. These would hog my heat mat and grow light space a lot if I were using them. But what I do start are a lot of perennials. So I have a ton of echinacea right now, bergenia, columbine, ladies mantle, eryngium. I have all sorts of things. And when those are a little bigger, I can tell you that I will be potting those up into plug trays outside. And that's just because I have such large quantities of them. I don't want to have to make two inch blocks for all these perennials I'm going to be potting up. And I also don't even have the space indoors to have thousands of these two inch blocks yeah. sitting under my grow lights. I also want to be able to put the trays outside and let them be rained on or water them overhead. Totally takes that whole, oh my goodness, they're sitting out and it's starting to rain. It's going to mess the blocks up. So every, you know, I am not a purist, as obviously you can tell. I use whatever works best, whatever yeah. makes sense, right? Just like yes. you are. All right. So how about cuttings? What cuttings do you start in plug trays? So the only two plants that I have ever really taken cuttings from um, are salvias. Well, actually, I guess it's three. Two different types of salvia, salvia mexicana and salvia lacanthia. And those are late summer bloomers um, that you don't start from seed. You typically take cuttings and they are super easy to do. Um, and then the other one is when we pinch our azuratum early, the first planting or two early in the summer, um, I take those pinchings and actually start them as cuttings. Um, instead of starting the next succession of seed, we just root the cuttings and they do really, really well. Um, and again, I love doing them in the plug trays because as I just mentioned, once they take root, once we get them rooted, they can sit outside in the full blast in sun and you don't have to worry about rain. 
Right. And we should also mention that on the farm, Lisa, you're typically using 128 cell plug trays. I have various sizes depending on what exactly I'm going to be growing and how long they're going to be growing in these trays. Okay. So now let's talk about bumping some seedlings up that were started in the three quarter inch blocks, bumping them up to two inch blocks. So let's start with which seedlings do you bump up from the three quarter inch to the two inch blocks? So we don't do that very often at all, um, but I would say that the ones that um, come to mind are eucalyptus, which is a super slow grower. That's what's pictured in my hand. Um, So that grew probably about three weeks, four weeks in the three quarter inch block. And I mean, it was only like a, you know, inch tall little baby. And, but its roots started get, were so robust, it needed more space. So we then bumped it up to the two inch block and you can see how the roots are just, I mean, this is what soil blocking is all about. Y'all, if you're listening on a podcast, you've got to go over to YouTube and look at the pictures of these two inch blocks with these absolutely gorgeous roots coming out. Um, those, these are roots you would never see when you plant in a container because those roots would have been wrapped by now. They would have hit that wall surface of the wall of the container and turned and started winding. Um, So eucalyptus, we bump. In vegetables, we always bump our tomatoes, our peppers, and eggplants up. Because again, they aren't necessarily slow growers, but we like to have a little bit larger transplant. We have a cutworm problem here on this farm and they will saw our tomatoes off every single time. Um, So having a larger transplant prevents that. So those are the four that come to mind. Anything that someone was wanting to bump up could be bumped up to a two inch block. But most things that you're growing and most things that I'm growing as well get planted out directly from the three quarter inch block. Right. So we have quite a long growing season. How about people with relatively short growing seasons? How can starting seeds earlier and bumping up be helpful in that situation? If you live um, where your growing season is shorter, you know, in the northern regions of the United States or somewhere where, you know, you don't start planting, let's say, warm season stuff till the end of May or June, those are times that it is to your advantage, perhaps to consider bumping up stuff. So you can start a little earlier, have a more mature plant to plant out because your growing season is shorter. But the difference between this and growing in either a plug tray and then having to bump it up to a container, you just have an unroot bound, wrapped up transplant to plant when that time comes. Um, So yeah, so we, you would bump up if you have a short growing season. Yeah. So why would you bump something up rather than planting directly into the ground from the three quarter inch block, like taking eucalyptus, for example, why not just put it in the ground from the three quarter inch block? Why bump it up? It's just a small transplant at that stage. They're such slow growers and because they're slow growers, they're going to be slow growers out in your garden. So they, I mean, they can just fall victim to all kinds of, you know, things that can happen out there. So we just like for them to have a little bit more size and to get that size, they need more volume of root space to actually do that. Yep. Okay. So now let's move on to another question. Why not just start the seeds? If you're going to end up bumping some of these things up to the two inch blocks, why not just start in the two inch blocks to begin with and save yourself the step of potting them up? What a good question. Um, Well, it kind of puts you back into the same scenario of when we were trying to start seeds in cell packs or maybe in peat pots, you have this large mass of soil and you're putting this little tiny seed on top and it's hard to give it the consistent warmth and moisture. Usually what happens um, for many of us, the, the top is wet and the bottom's dry or vice versa, or it's too cool on the surface and it's not warming all the way up. Um, the small blocker, the three quarter inch blocker was in fact Um, A lot of big growers use it to actually sprout seeds. It just is so, so conducive to what the conditions that just do such a great job of sprouting. Um, So sprouting in the three quarter inch block took me from being a very poor seed starter back before I discovered soil blockers using all these other methods. I just, 
I would have a little bit of success, but you just nothing you could count on. I'm telling you, when I plant my first seeds that I sowed in soil blocks, believe it or not, were snapdragons. And I was an overnight success. In three days, I had like 100% germination and it changed my life. It was like, first off, every, after I did it, everything I read said snapdragons are really hard to sprout. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be successful. <laughs> But I was, and it was because of that small block. I mean, if I had put them in the top of a two inch blocker, I, we wouldn't be sitting here having this discussion. Pretty sure. Yeah. Something else about the two inch block, especially like in my growing conditions in the winter, the space that I grow in is really cool. And a lot of fungi that cause things like damping off, they thrive in cool, yeah. wet conditions. And in my space in the winter time with cooler conditions, the two inch blocks don't seem to fully dry out in a 24 hour cycle until yeah. there are some roots there to start absorbing water. So what I really like about starting in the smaller three quarter inch blocks is that they go from wet to completely dried out in a yes. 24 hour cycle. And I think that wet dry cycle helps to ward off some of those fungal issues that I might otherwise experience. That is so true. And I think, yeah, I think people think that block is so small. They are just, they just can't believe that it can do it. But in fact, it's the small size that makes them superstars. Yeah. Also, just from a practical standpoint, as I mentioned, I start a lot of perennials from seed and some of them can take a really long time to germinate. So if I started those things that I'm going to be bumping up, if I started them directly in the two inch blocks, that's going to be taking up so much soil. It's going to be hogging a lot of heat mat space, a lot of grow light space. And then what if only three quarters of them germinate in the first place? Right. It just seems like an unnecessary waste of resources when I could have just started in the smaller blocks and then bumped seedlings up as needed. It is. And I have to tell you, sitting here looking at these roots is like the best thing that's happened to me today. I mean, <laughs> that I mean, and I want to say to people, so what's in my hand is eucalyptus. But the other side of this slide, those are tomatoes, black cherry heirloom tomatoes, as a matter of fact, that where you can see it's visible that I started them in the three quarter inch block. Then they were slid into the two inch block made with the inserts. And those roots are just amazing. I mean, they're just fabulous. They are. They're beautiful. All right. So last question on this subject. So how do you know when it's time to bump a seedling up from the three quarter inch block to the two inch block? What cues do you look for? So that's a really great question. And you, most of us, me first in this line, wait too late. Um, you want to, if you know you're going to bump them up, if that's in your plan, like we know all tomatoes, all peppers are going to be bumped, um, then you would do it probably when they're, you know, I, 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 I don't want to say a time frame because everybody's grows at a different rate, but I would say between that seven to 14 day range when there's not a lot of roots, um, but there are good, strong root growth going on before you have some dangly stuff going on and just, and you literally just slide them down into that little divot that's made with the insert, give it a little pat to make sure it's snug and there's not a lot of air. And that's the end of the story. And then they quickly will, those roots will just dive into that block and keep on growing. So if in fact you do wait too late, which I'm, you know, telling for a friend that had this experience, <laughs> um, you can, you know, you pull up your block. So for us, sometimes it's like, oh gosh, you know, how did this get away from me? Right. I just, it seemed like I just looked at it yesterday and they weren't quite ready. Now they've got all these roots. Um, I literally separate the blocks. I use a um, plant ID stick, like a popsicle stick and cut them apart when they're like that, because it's kind of hard to break the blocks apart, potentially, if they've got a lot of too much root growth, cut them apart, or you can even use a spatula, like a pancake spatula to cut them into to squares um, and then if there's a lot of dangly kind of root stuff going on, I just take a pair of scissors and cut them, give them a haircut. Um, and that just prunes them. And in fact, that kind of stimulates them to grow some more roots. So that's what we do here. 
And one other thing we should have mentioned before is if you're wondering what we're talking about, about bumping these three quarter inch blocks up into the two inch, there's actually an insert that goes inside the chambers of the two inch blocker that makes an indent that's the perfect size to drop in that three quarter inch block. So that's something we should have mentioned. That's what Lisa is referring yes. to when she's talking about just dropping it into that indent and just giving it a little pat to make sure it's snug. And yeah, yeah, I mean, just sitting here looking at these tomato roots and when you plant that plant in the garden, they literally hit the ground running. You don't have to untangle roots. You don't have to shock them by doing that, which is what you should do if you're pulling them out of a container and they're all tangled up. You've got to liberate them, right? Um, but that's just not necessary with soul yes. blocks. yes. All right. That was our episode for today. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I do want to do an entire episode on soil blocking. So if you have any burning questions you would like to be included in that episode, make sure to send them in. Either use the form linked in the show notes, or you can email info at thegardenersworkshop.com and just say seed talk topic request, or you can leave a comment over on YouTube. So if you have any soil blocking questions that you would love to have answered, let us know. We always appreciate you listening and watching. And if you're over in a podcast app, we always appreciate if you can give us a rating and a review. And if you're on YouTube, we love when you like and comment. Yes. And if you want to learn more about the work that we're doing at the Gardener's Workshop, head on over to thegardenersworkshop.com. So friends, thank you, Lane, so much for such a great show today. Thank you. I'm glad the roots made your day. Yeah, they did. I'm telling you, that's kind of, that's, that's really great on a winter day. All yeah. right, friends, until we meet again, ciao. Bye.